It's our time. We must rise up and no longer disparage. It's our time, church, to honor our heritage. We have a savior. He gave it all on the cross. We stand beside martyrs who counted nothing as loss. They took God's mysteries, opened them up for us. Stephen, John the Baptist, Bonhoeffer, Jan Hus. Surrounded by a cloud of witnesses above, it's now our turn to model his unending love. Our mission is one we cannot confuse, nor muddy up with some trite excuse. You say you're not well-versed, ready, or able. I think Moses even tried to use that fable. The time we have, it's now more urgent. If we should hear, well done, faithful servant. Yeah, church, it's our time. It's our time to confess the ways we're mangled, the sins and selfishness that have us entangled. Lust, greed, and pride, their path leads to the grave. Yet we return to our sins as if we're a slave. Can we survive in this putrid dead sea? I quote Paul, may it never be. So let's cast aside our individual leprosy and begin to leave a biblical legacy. There's a glorious prize awaiting to be won, and the way to win is to start to run. Let's lace them up and fight the good fight, become to the world both salt and light. Our life on earth is merely a vapor. Our chapter must move from pen to paper. So church, let's get to writing because it's our time. It's our time, church. We have what it takes to help the world from its slumber awake. To Jesus, we are his beautiful bride. Whom shall we fear with him on our side? We have each other. We are not alone. It's iron to iron in the combat zone. There's a promise of life full of adventure. As long as we give both talents and treasure, the workers are few, the harvest is plenty, with so many lives running on empty. Scores of people trying to cope. They've come to the end of their proverbial rope. Young eyes are wandering, looking for direction. Make sure we point them to his resurrection. The clock's ticking. We're on our dime. Hey, church, rise up. It's our time. It's our time. It's time for us to do some things that God has called us to do to continue to walk in them. You know, uh, as we look back at, at 2013, it was a good year. It had some challenges. But as we look ahead to 2014, I believe this is the year for some things to happen for all of us. And it's our time. Amen. And you have to believe that it's, it's, it's your time. The Bible says, I was teaching at the encounter last night, if you can imagine that. And as we were walking through Mark chapter 9, and we talked about the signs that would follow. It said that, the, the verse said this, for everyone who believes. So you have to have a belief, a faith, that God can do the impossible. That God is still sovereign, he is still in control, regardless of the situations or the circumstances, and that he can do whatever he pleases. And it's our time. And even as we walk into the prayer of Jabez, open your Bibles if you have them to First Chronicles chapter 4. We're going to talk about how our prayers and our requests to God work and how God responds to them. Because it's about being able to put them before him and then having him respond. Let's pray. Father, as we, as we unfold this year, as you unfold it before us, and even if, if it's starting out crappy for some, really joyful for others, God, we know that you have a purpose in it. And we're going to believe together with you that it is our time to share you, to see people come to know you, to see people get healed by you, to see people get restored and repaired by you, God. And we just thank you, God, that you take us through things, Lord, even though we don't understand the purposes in them. Therefore, your glory. And we pray that you will reveal that for us. But we're excited about what you want to do, the possibility and the destiny of you moving in on us as we open up to you to do your work through us. 
So we want to bless you and say thank you, God, and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's look at this. As Some of you may have heard of this prayer. Some of you may have not. The title of the prayer is the, the prayer of Jabez. And today our, our message title is simply that. It, the title of the message is Bless Me. Simply bless me. Have you ever wondered, have you ever thought, have you just ever considered to ask God to do just that, to just bless me? I know when we pray, we would like to pray for other people. We like to intercede. We like to cover everybody else. We like to ask for other things. But have you ever considered the matter of just asking God for yourself to bless you? Not in a selfish vein, but in a purposeful vein that God would just bless you. I pray this for our church, that God would bless us as a church so that we can continue the journey and, and the purpose and the calling that he has us. Because if he doesn't bless us, we won't be able to finish the race. We won't be equipped to do all that he's called us to do without his blessing on our lives. Now, here's the backdrop of the story. If you read Chronicles, and then for some of you, I know some of you are diligent. I'm trying to be diligent this year to read through the Bible chronologically, okay? This is going to be fun because when you get to books like Chronicles, right, and some of the kings, you're going to read the genealogy of life, right? And it's he begot he, and she begot the dog, and the dog begot the cat, and the cat did the rat. And it goes on and on and on and on in these generational, these generational legacies of, of who did what, and tribe by tribe, right? So especially if you read the Chronicles, and it gets, in one word, and I believe this word is in the Bible too, it gets boring. You know, it's interesting that one level, if you can put all the genealogies together and who was what and did what, and what we have here in chapter 4, but at other level, when you're trying to read it and just, you know, read for context, you know, it gets really boring to read, you know, and Sam begot the dog and the dog begot the cat and blah, 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 blah. But here in the middle, in the middle of this genealogy of the clan of Judah, right in verse 9 and 10, there's a pause and a break in the genealogy, and it's laying out who Jabez is, and Jabez has a prayer that they put in here, and it's like, why would they put this right in the middle of this chronological excerpt of this family? And then, not only that, we ask ourselves the question, what does it mean? So here, in, in chapter 4, verse 9, it says this, Jabez was more honorable as it gave his genealogy to, in verse 7 and 8 of who he was attached to and where he came from, his descendants, but Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother named him Jabez, saying, I have gave birth to him in pain. Now, we don't know what all that pain means or what that, what that looks like and what that describes. We can only try to guess a little bit. But she gave birth to him in pain. It could just be natural that she had pain. He could have been breached or something. She had pain in birth, and she named him Jabez. But the trick part is that when, when the Jews named their, their children, they tried to name them for destiny and purpose. It was, like a, it was like a prophetic name. So imagine going around and your name is born in pain. You know? Imagine getting beat up because you have a bad name. You know, imagine getting teased because your name is just kind of, I think this is in the Bible too, funky. I think that's in the Bible. I could, we have to look it up. Your name is kind of funky and people pick on you because you have a, a weird name. Huh? Anybody ever grow up like that? If you do, if we, got, if we come to an encounter, we'll get you some healing. <laughs> but his name was, just trying to say, I'm trying to help here today. You know, I gave birth to him in pain. So his name was Jabez. And verse 10 says this. And Jabez, listen to this word, he cried out to God, to the God of Israel. Jabez must have had a relationship with God. He must have understood him. And the verse says here that Jabez cried out to God. And this is what he said. Oh, that, and come on, iPad. Oh, that you would bless me and bless me indeed. My iPad just did a flip on me. It's not catching up. Hang on. We go to the hard notes. See, that's what technology will do for you. So I want to read it out because I want to make some references to it. Sorry about that. 
But here we go. This is reading from the, um, what version am I reading with? The New King James Version. It says, oh, that you would bless me indeed, don't forget that part, okay, and enlarge my territories that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. The ending of the verse, don't forget this part, so God granted him what he requested. Don't forget that part, okay? So here, here's what Jabez asked of the Lord. And then it goes into the rest of the chapter. It goes back into the rest of the chronologicals, okay? So right here in the pause, in the middle of this chronological excerpt, it says Jabez was more honorable than his brothers and sisters and that he was born in pain. And then Jabez cried out to the Lord, and he said this, O oh Lord, that you would bless me indeed. One thing he asked for was what? The first thing was to do what? Bless, bless him indeed. Then the second thing that Jabez asked was that you would do what? Enlarge my territories. Okay, we're going to talk about what that means in a couple weeks. And then the third thing he asked was that your hand would be with me. And then he asked that you would keep me from evil, right? Keep me from evil and that I would not cause pain. And God did what? God granted him his request. Now, what is this about Jabez? Why is this prayer important? Why is it relevant to us? Well, Jabez understood what a lot of us don't understand, and that is there's only one God and that he should be the center of our works, and God wants to bless your life. Do you believe that? God wants to bless your life. That's important. But you have to make a choice to invite God and ask him to bless your life. Did you hear what I said? I used the C word in that. You know what the C word is? Choice. You have to first make the, say it with me, choice to invite God into your life and ask him to bless it. See, a lot of us think that, you know, when we make a choice, we like to pray again, as I said earlier, for other people. How many of you today, when you woke up this morning and you prayed, $1,000 question, did you pray for yourself? Hmm, yeah. Did you pray for yourself? It's not, we're not talking about selfishly. God, make me cuter, make me thinner, give me longer, richer hair. But that God, would you bless me? Would you be with me? Would you cover me? Would you keep my mouth from saying the wrong thing? Would you keep my mouth and help me say the right thing? Come on now. How many of us woke up this morning and asked God to do something in us and through us? See, that's where it starts, because the rest of it comes after that. Are you tracking with me? The rest of it comes after that, all the other things that come around us, but it starts with us as a person. If we can choose to invite God into our life, to ask him to bless us and to be with us, then we can pour that out, as we call it here, the overflow from the reservoir within. So it starts with us making the choice to invite him. And Jabez not only wanted God to be a part of him, he invited him, he asked for success and increase and influence with God. Proverbs 16, 3 says this, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts will be established. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts will shall be or will be established. If you start with the first thing first, who, the first thing first is what? Us. You know? When we did the uh, Love and Respect series, you know, 
Dr. Uh, Elkerson, I think it was his name, he said it wasn't so much in how that, how things come your way, but the bigger part was how we respond to things. So even, even with problem situations and circumstances coming our way, it's really not so much the issues of the problem circumstances or, or situations, it's how we respond to them. I was listening to Rick Warren this week, and he was saying that for every situation, every problem, he can show you a solution. I was like, okay, Rick, how are you going to show us a solution? And he basically said this, we're going to start by looking in the mirror. The problem is not as big as the problem, but it's really you and how you respond to the problem. That's where the solution starts. And so I turned that off the radio real quick. <laughs> See, but it's critical for us to understand that, that our lives and how our lives go and what God wants to do in our lives starts with us. Yeah, we have all the people that are involved around us that we interact in our lives, but the first part, it starts where? It starts with us, right. So it's critical to understand that having a close relationship with God, God wants to support our lives. He wants to be there for us. He does want to bless us. And Jabez knew specifically that God came, God was with him, and that he was the one who could protect him from evil, he could keep him from pain, and he believed that. And in doing so, God approved of Jabez's request. Mm -hmm. So I just want to let you know that as you cry out to God, it is okay I want to take this off the table and wipe this off the board, this fear of asking God to be with you and to bless you and to ask God to do something for you. Let's dismiss that fear as of today. And that when you do pray, it is okay to pray and ask God to bless you. It is okay to ask God to do something for you. Not just, we're not talking about, yes, we ask God to do those things for God change my thoughts towards this person or my attitude. No, we're talking about God be with me. God uphold me. God sustain me. Give me the covering that I need. Be my God. Bless me with your favor, with your honor. Bless me with your love. It's okay. Because it's not self-centered. Because again, out of that flows the overflow so that we can give that away to others. You say, but that does sound selfish. Well, it, it may sound selfish, but if the purpose and the, and the reasoning is that God's kingdom would increase in and through you and you would be a vessel of his, it's not that selfish. It's not selfish at all. So there's a story from the book, uh, The Prayer of Jabez. It's Dr. Wilkinson uh, wrote this book. He wrote a story in here about two, young, uh, two people on an encounter, a personal retreat encounter, sort of like ours, and they were rooming together, and one was a younger Christian who had just started his journey, and there was this older 70-year-old Christian who was rooming with him. So this young guy got stuck with an old man. And the way the story goes is that this young Christian knew that this older guy was a diligent prayer warrior, as we would call them, and so he saw him early in the morning as they got up one morning, and he saw him in his room on his knees getting ready to pray. And so he cracked open the door as he was getting ready to take a shower. He stopped and cracked open the door and was listening to hear how this guy would pray. And the first thing he heard was this prayer of Jabez. And the old guy said, God, that you would bless me. It's like, Wow. And something came and transpired, so he left and went and took a shower. And he was pondering this whole thing. Why would this old guy pray, God, that you would bless me? So the story goes that as he encountered with him, he asked him, why would you pray that way? The end of the story, he said, replied, well, if God doesn't bless me, how can I be any good for his purposes? If God doesn't shower himself down on me, how can I be good for his, what? Purposes. It's okay. And I want to give you permission to know that it's okay to ask God to bless you. 
Because if the focus is on God's purposes, then God will be glorified. And when you do pray and you ask God to bless you, pray his will and his word. Are you hearing me? Pray his will and his word. Well, what is God's will for my life? Well, God's will for your life is that God's will for your, one of God's wills for your life is that you have his loving kindness. Mm-hmm. Okay, so God, I pray that I have your loving kindness. That's your will for my life. Mm-hmm. So pray the word. What does the word say? What does the word say? Find some scriptures and pray the word. The word says this, that God would be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. Pray the word. I pray, God, as we walk today, that you would eliminate where I go and eliminate not only where I go, but my mind and what I do. Pray his will. Pray his word. God has good for you. Pray Jeremiah 29. Right? God, I know you have a good plan for my life. A plan for good and not for evil. Let that be so today. Bless me in that. A little twisted, huh? A little out of our paradigm because we're so into praying for others and having compassion upon them and, and praying for them and seeing good for them. Sometimes we forget about the main thing. And the main thing is that it starts with us. See, God wants good for you because if he has good for you, you are good for his kingdom. Did you hear what I said? If he provides good for you, he's providing good for what? His kingdom. kingdom. See, not only did Jabez pray, he prayed this. If you look at your Bibles and look at the verse on the screen, it says, Lord, that you would bless me. And the next word is what? Indeed. Lord, that you would bless me, what? Indeed. Looking at, looking at the original language, it says that when, you, when they use a word like indeed, it was like putting five exclamation points behind it. You know, like when you're texting, you highlight and put all the little emotes behind it. It's like indeed, indeed, indeed. Five, yes. This was an imperative. This was something that I need, something that I can't do without God. I can't live without your blessings. I can't live without your favor being upon me. I can't do it because I need that. Bless me what? Indeed. So let's talk about what the word bless means. Let's define it real quick. Because we get our word eulogy from the word bless. From the word bless, we get this word eulogy. And a eulogy is only this. It's to speak well of. Speak a word that's well of, to praise and to celebrate. Even as we get ready to celebrate Brenda's life, we're going to do a eulogy. And all we're going to do is to what? Speak well of her. We're going to bless her. For all of those people in the room who don't know Jesus, we're going to share the good things of her life. We're going to celebrate her. We're going to acknowledge the goodness of God. And that's all blessing means in the verb form. It means to bless, to acknowledge his goodness, to acknowledge his glory, to celebrate. So when we say God in the, in the verb form, bless me, God, would you speak well of me? And see, and then the point from there is that God has to figure out how to speak well of you. That means that there are things in your life that he has to transition and do so that, you can, so that God can speak well of you. And that means there are some things that you may have to participate in so that God can do what? Speak You might want to write that down in your notes. God, would you speak well of me? How can you make that happen? And then, guess what? The responsibility is on him, and the participation part is on... Because here's, here's, here's a quote. I remember a friend wrote this to me that I'm only required to do what God calls me to do. It is up to him to make it happen. Did you hear that? I'm only required what he's called me to do. 
Now, the rest of it, how he's going to make it happen, I have to trust him in that. But I have to participate and do what? What I am required to do. When I do that, God is responsible for making all the rest of it happen. Because I'm not responsible how it's supposed to happen. That's God's part. I'm supposed to participate in it with him. But my responsibility is to do what he requires and to ask him and to request of him and invite him in. So that's one definition uh, of blessed. Another definition of it is to invoke a blessing upon a person. So that's about words. Uh, to ask something solemn, solemnly in prayer or to cause, to prosper, to make happy, to, to, stow, to bestow upon a blessing. All those bees in there got me twisted. <laughs> The cause to proper, prosper, to make happy, and to bestow a blessing upon. So when we say, God, bless me indeed, we're asking him to cause us to prosper, to make us happy, to bestow upon us a blessing. So the question is, that's good. How do we get blessed? How do we get blessed then? And what does that look like? Well, let me give you one way that you get blessed today. To get blessed is just, it's based upon our actions and our obedience. Are you tracking with me? It's based upon our actions and our obedience. Luke 11, 27 and 28 says this. When Jesus was speaking, a woman in the crowd called out to him and said, blessed you are, blessed God bless your mother, the womb from which you came, and the breast that you nursed. And Jesus replied, but even more, bless to all those who hear the word of God and put it into practice. To be blessed, we not only hear the word of God, but we do what? Put it into practice. James says that not only are we to be hearers of the word, but we are to be what? So how do I get blessed? How do I ask God to bless me indeed? Well, I see what it says in his words, and I put it into practice. And when I do that, I am called blessed. If we were to put that in a formula, it would be the word put into practice equals blessed. Simple formula. Get the word plus put it into practice equals blessed. Blessed. That's not always that simple, though, is it? It didn't sound simple in the formula, doesn't it? That sounded cool, though. But in reality, it's not always that simple because of our human nature. Because of our stuff and our things. Because of those other people that make me sin. Yeah? It's all their fault, Tony. It's their fault that I sin. I wouldn't sin if they wouldn't mess with me. Isn't it true? Yeah. And so God, we just, you know, get rid of them, then we won't have no sin in the world. <laughs> but our part, we're responsible, is to be, to be hearers of the word and, and then be doers of it. Solomon, take the story of Solomon in 2 Chronicles 6, 1st chapter uh, 6 through 10. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to leave the iPad alone today, Okay. You mess with me once, that's all I need. Solomon was blessed. We know that Solomon was blessed with wisdom, but he was only blessed with wisdom after he obeyed. Are you tracking with me? He was only blessed with wisdom after he obeyed what God had told him to do. Not only did he hear from God, but he put it into practice. And this is how that happened in in, Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse 6, it says, And Solomon went up there to the bronze altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle meeting, and offered a a thousand burnt offerings on it. And that night, God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask. What does your Bible say? What's behind the ask? What what, what, what grammar, grammar punctuation is behind the ask in your Bible? I have an exclamation point. You got a period? Mine has an exclamation point. It says, ask. The point is, God appeared to Solomon and said to him, what? 
ask. I say to you today that it's okay to ask God. It's okay to ask God to bless you. God appeared to Solomon in the middle of the night and told him what? Ask. He said, ask, what shall I give you? Because Solomon had obeyed God. Wouldn't it be cool? Could you imagine? You know, come on now. Could you imagine sleeping on, on the cool side of the pillow? You know, just laying there chilling. Three o'clock in the morning. Let's say three o'clock. That's a good time. Three o'clock in the morning. You know, it's nice and cool at night and you've just been under the good covers and everything is restful. And all of a sudden you get awakened and it's God. He said, hey. Hey, Ephraim. Ephraim, wake up. Ask. You're like, what? Ask. Whatever it is you want, ask. What would you do? Yeah. Would you freak out a little bit? Would you say, okay, then I want this, I want the dog and the cat and the color TV and the 22-foot boat. You know, come on. I need new skeetos. You know, I need more vacation time. But look what verse 8 said. And God said, I, I shall give you, and I will give it. And Solomon said, God, you have shown great mercy to David, my father. You have made me king in his place. Now, O oh Lord. Let your promise to, to David, my father, be established, for you have made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Now give me wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people, for who can judge this great people of yours? And then God said to Solomon, because this was in your heart, and you have not asked for riches or wealth or honor or the life of your enemies, nor have you asked for long life, but you have asked for wisdom and knowledge for yourself, that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you, and I will give you riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have ever had who were before you, nor shall any after you have like this. See, Solomon started with himself. God, this is what I need you to do for me in order to bless me so that I can be a blessing for your kingdom. He asked for wisdom and for knowledge. He, and, and right there, if we were to paraphrase verse 11, in God's reply to him, he didn't ask for anything materialistic or superficial. Because here's the thing. You ready for a kicker? Here's the thing. God wants to do that stuff for you anyway. He does. He's a good God. He wants to bless you with honor. He wants to bless you with good things. He, want to, he wants to bless you with material goods. He wants that for you anyway. But he also wants you and me to have a heart towards him. A heart that would use wisdom wisely and knowledge so that it would be for the purposes of his kingdom. So where does, if we were to get blessed with the spirit of wisdom and knowledge, where does it come from? Because wisdom and knowledge are a blessing. Are you hearing me? Wisdom and knowledge are a blessing. Where does that come from? I'll tell you. Thank you for asking. It comes from the spirit of of the Lord. Isaiah 11, 2 says this, the blessing of the Lord, I'm just going to paraphrase this part, the blessings of the Lord come from his spirit. Isaiah 2, 11 speaks it like this, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, and the fear of the Lord, they are all blessings that come from the Spirit of the Lord. 
The blessings of the Lord come from the Spirit of the Lord. And they come for you to be blessed indeed so that God can use you for his purposes, for your destiny that he's designed for you. My question as we walk away today, have you asked God to bless you? See, if we were doing the next steps on the, on, the, on the sermon notes, these would be your next steps as you walk away this week. Step one, ask God to bless you. So that means you have to choose to invite him in to bless you. We start there. No matter where it may be, no matter what stage in life you are, choose, step one, invite, step two, right? Ask for a blessing. Then what kind of blessing shall I ask for? Well, here's another step for you. Ask for wisdom. Ask for knowledge. Ask that God would give you good counsel and he would give you might. Ask for understanding. Ask that the fear of the Lord would be with you. Now, can you imagine, no matter where you are in life, in your circumstances, and life kicks in on you with disappointments and letdowns, or even life becomes more abundant with a lot of prosperity for you, because you know they say, there's stats that say that most of the lottery winners go broke in six months, right? That's what the stats say. So what if life came in and you did win the lotto? And you did have prosperity. What would, that, what would you do with that? Because the question that I ask today is, would you have the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding to be wise with it? See, sometimes when we get prosperity, we look at the good side, it's like, ooh, easy, breezy, cheesy. And it's all good. But it takes wisdom, understanding, and knowledge to walk in prosperity. Just like it takes wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to walk through hard things in life. So... As you walk through your week this week and you spend time with God, what are you going to ask him for? I desire that you would ask God to bless you. My prayer for you this week is that God would bless you. Not only bless you, but bless you indeed. What would he bless you with? He would bless you from his spirit Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel with might and with the spirit of God himself and fear and reverence of the Lord. Those things would help us as we walk through life make better decisions. They would help us encounter people differently. They would help us walk through our journey in life more clearly. Stand with me as we close. Bow your heads. And I'm going to pray. And then we're going to do an invitation to the front, to the altar. And I want you to pray as I pray. You don't have to repeat after me, but I want you to pray. And I want you to do this today. I want you to pray for yourself. 
I know that may be a little foreign, a little weird. I know you may have other things that you want to pray for and pray about. But would you pray for yourself today? During this time of the Holy Spirit moving in the room. But what am I going to pray for myself? Well, let's pray as Jabez and start with the first thing first. That we would make a choice and invite God to just bless you. And what that looks like in your life if God were to bless you. So let's bow our heads and take a minute to pray. Father, as you move across this room, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would alert and make, reveal knowledge and wisdom to people right now as they begin to pray for themselves. Revelatory knowledge right now, God, of you in their lives. They, they would choose to pray and invite you in to their life. And that they would pray for wisdom. They would pray to be blessed and to be blessed indeed. I pray for everyone in the room that, God, you would, you would bless us with your very self. You would bless us with your spirit because the blessings of the Lord come from the spirit of God. Not that we would make any vain requests, Lord, of any idle things, but we would ask for you to be with us. I pray that you would continue to give us wisdom, knowledge, understanding, good counsel, God, discernment. I pray that you would move forward in our lives, God, so that we would have the fear of the Lord upon us in what we do. Father, I want to ask that you would forgive us of our false humility of saying, oh, I don't need prayer. Let's pray for someone else. When we all need you to bless us. Forgive us of being super spiritual humble instead of receiving what you have for us and asking you to bless us for your purposes. We're so concerned with others. But God, how can we be concerned with others if you haven't filled us with all that we need for you, from you? So would you bless us and would you bless us indeed? If you're here in the room today, as we move into a time of, of ministering, and you need more than, than and God just to bless you for yourself and there are other things that you need prayer for we're going to be up here to minister to you and we just want you to come in and just let us pray for you real quick and minister to your need so if that is you in the room today after we make two more appeals we're going to ask you to come and come to the front and let us pray for you but I, want to, I don't want to close this time of time out without this. If there's someone in the room today and you don't know Jesus and you want to make a commitment to him for the very first time, would you just raise your hand for me today? If you need to make a renewal to him, to commit your life to him, would you just raise your hand for me today so I can pray for you? Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, Father, I want to pray for the, for the commitments to know you, to renew their strength in you right now, that you would be with them and that you would bless them indeed, that they would come and they would bow themselves before you, God, and that you would begin to continue to walk with them in their journey. Minister to their hearts where they may be hurting, God be with them and keep them. Father, we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. After we close our service today, we're going to be up here at the altars. If you want additional prayer, we'll be up here to pray for you later. But you have a seat and we're going to do a quick song and we're going to collect our connection cards and then we'll come back and we'll close the service.
have our greeters go ahead and collect our connection cards. We're going to worship and while we do that. There I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will stand. And I'll call upon your name. And keep I want to thank you for, one more time, one more time, there we go. I want to thank you for being with us today, and I want you to continue to walk out today and pray that God would bless you this week. That is my prayer for you this week, that you would pray for yourself and ask God to bless you and to bless you indeed. May God be with you, his face shine upon you. Don't forget that... Uh, if you want to serve at Brenda Talley's services, you can sign up on your connection cards. Um, it's Wednesday, 2 o'clock, tentatively. I know so far is coming up. Just remind you. But God be with you. God bless you. And God keep you. Amen? Amen. Have a great week. We need help picking up today. Yes.